What do you know about Evander Holyfield, aside from being an undisputed legend and a true warrior who has endured numerous battles? Did you know that many of his legendary bouts were fought in far from ideal conditions? Despite health issues and heart problems, this monster never refused to step into the ring and engage in a fierce battle. Inside the ring, he refused to throw in the towel, even when his health was in a critical condition. Today, we'll not only revisit all of his defeats, but also delve into the challenges that accompanied his career and shaped this true warrior. Are you ready to uncover the secrets of his struggle? If so, hit the like button and let's get started. 28 fights, 28 victories, including 19 knockouts. That was the record of undisputed champion Evander Holyfield before his next title defense. And now for the fifth time On November 13th, 1992, Holyfield stepped into the ring against the undefeated contender Riddick Bowe. Evander was considered the favorite with odds at 7-5. Approximately 18,000 people attended the match, and it was well worth it. The spectacle was captivating from the first round. The fighters quickly discarded tactical considerations, engaging in a brutal showdown. The man with greater experience and ring guide. I've never seen a referee let that much grease go on. And George Foreman, Riddick is that he is no his. Conceding that matter does both. That they stack so much grease. Good left hook to the body by Evander Holyfield. And the left hook. The fight started with a jab exchange. Evander performed brilliantly in the first round, utilizing his speed and precision. Jab into Holyfield's right hand leads to his own. And all of the And he thought he should forget about the jab. Holyfield been able to mount his attack and get away. So far, this is with the left-right combination. Bo answers with one punch in return. And Holyfield again, getting the best. From the second round onwards, the dynamics of the fight shifted, and all subsequent rounds were marked by a brutal exchange of blows. Of Some people say too many. In combinations by the champion oh, Evander oh, Holyfield. Oh, oh, oh. And already Bo begins to hold and hit, and they brawl in the center of the ring. Evander Holyfield showing his warrior's heart, believes he has Bo hurt. Cut in. And the left hook for Holyfield. Mr. Holyfield reaching in for his jab, which is what he wants. I think Evander just doesn't know exactly what to do right now. You know, why should he? There's the uppercut again by Bo. Left hook by Holyfield. Evander Holyfield may be the most telling blows in the whole fight. Left hook by Bo. Two of them. Holyfield. They're doing what comes naturally. They're doing what comes naturally. Good right hand by Lee. While Holyfield excelled on the inside, engaging in a slugfest with a larger and hard-hitting opponent proved to be a mistake. Every best advantage you can when the rough just to look good for this fight. A little damage, but not as much as it might have appeared to be the case. Holyfield landing inside. Both comes right back. The gas after some of these exchanges, George. Oh, but all of the zip is going out of that big right hand. Oh, that Between the two oh, shots, these are all bow punches here. Holyfield, for the moment, not active. The young contender put up a more than worthy resistance, frequently finding his target with powerful right uppercuts. For the moment, no doubt inside with the jab. Thinks he can use it to great effect. Let's look more carefully. There's the left hook by Holyfield. And another, and another, and another. Holyfield wobbles Bo under the rope. Bad game, leaning in with the old crossover. He's never done it. Oh, Evander, every chance he gets, he tries. Holyfield falls in, following his right foot out there. Evander Holyfield giving Riddick Bo every chance to whack him out of there to do it. I've never seen a guy who must have found it partially blocked by a Holyfield glove. In the closing moments of the fourth round, Bo delivered a low blow that significantly shook Evander, prompting an apology afterward. Low blow! Unbelievable pace. Unbelievable and unnecessary. By Cortez at first and now he does. Only 36 for Holyfield. There's a left and a right by Holyfield. Looks up when he jabs. Because they've got so many wounds. Give a breather at the wrong time. 
to make sure the other guy takes the free. Recognize what a weapon it can be. He said that the eye didn't... Whenever he does, he takes over the fight. Put on the other and move around and side to side. And Bo trying to capitalize with the uppercut. And Holyfield comes back with the right hand lead. We got courage. Stamina is truly endurance. Endurance is like who wants Holyfield it. Holyfield has landed less than half of his good chance of winning it. Bo lands the right hand over the top. Evander just freezes and looks at him and then comes he right was hurt. Him. Bo didn't realize that he was hurt. And now he wants if everybody would just scream. And the part of the crowd that supports Holyfield of all time. It's no longer a tactical shot one after another. Busy defending himself against foes. Now, we got the Holyfield corner was his blood. I don't know what it's all about. Good left hook. Holyfield with another left hook. The champion showing his courage, pawing at his left eye. Because it takes too much out of your body. The water is fired. Passage again, George. Oh, it's just tactical. Just uh, putting his hand up. Back with one of his own. Bo pawing his right eye. Yeah, he's got his the right eye again. Let's see if Holyfield tries to take advantage of that opportunity. He does. He does. Spin around. He does gloves. Yeah, but you can't afford it. I've been thumbed and the back of three shots for everyone he takes from the champion. Three, four minutes. And also likely to make Holyfield worry and feel negative. The championship rounds were intense and spectacular, earning applause from the audience for the two warriors standing tall. In the 10th round, Holyfield was rocked by a crushing uppercut from his opponent, and only the ropes saved him from a knockdown. All this time, he can't understand someone being so dirty. So you see Holyfield going down in this round, and Bo stuns him with an uppercut, and just Take like that. Take a look, folks, because what you saw in this round, it doesn't... But that conditioning in those... Despite the setback, he managed to endure and, in the end, even turned the tide against Riddick. Just like that, the champion struggles to stay on his feet. What a heart by Holyfield. He's going to go back to the right-hand lead. That kind of advice. Look at Holyfield. What a warrior. Put it on their feet. It it's a fight up. at this rate. It can all happen again. You've seen the best of both men. A right hand by Holyfield. And another. Round 10 continues after the bell. At the beginning of the 11th round, Holyfield suffered a severe knockdown, taking a left hook to the side. Totally exhausted yet. Oh, Holyfield in serious trouble now. Here's the uppercut again. The mouthpiece is out of Holyfield's mouth. And, he gets, and Holyfield gets up very early in the count. This time he has actually gone to the campus. Holyfield is elusive. He can survive. When it turns against you, is in the crowd out of their seats again. But Holy just don't know what instruction to give what guy. Holyfield still punches. Take KO for an answer in round number 11. It punched at number square with the judge's impression. 101, eight rounds to three. Riddick Bow. I have Riddick Bow in a commanding six point lead. Groomed himself through his cruiserweight career. Won the championship from Tyson, but rather ordinary courage. Spectacular heart and we earning more respect in his time. Riddick Bo has withstood criticism, and Bo believed in each other. Mary battled between you. After 12 rounds, Riddick Bo secured a unanimous decision victory. Evander experienced his first career defeat and lost his titles. After the fight, Holyfield announced his retirement from boxing, but in January 1993, he changed his mind. Evander hired a new coach, the legendary Emmanuel Stewart, and in his next bout, he defeated Alex Stewart for the second time, though the match wasn't as thrilling as the first. Thus, he earned a rematch with Riddick, in which he emerged victorious according to the majority of judges. Evander Holyfield evened the score with Bo, becoming the third fighter in the history of the heavyweight division after Floyd Patterson and Muhammad Ali to reclaim his titles from the same opponent after a loss. On April 22, 1994, Evander defended his title against Michael Moore. Moore, undefeated and a former dominant light heavyweight, had successfully transitioned to the heavyweight division, securing significant victories against Stewart, Cooper, and Smith. 
Before the fight with Mora, during one of Evander Holyfield's training sessions, he injured his left shoulder. As the fight approached, he reduced the workload and believed he could box at an adequate level. Michael and I actually, uh, the first time I saw him, I was at 165 and he actually pounds. So um, he actually had to uh, back out of the tournament because he couldn't make weight. Mora, a southpaw, generally proved to be more accurate and effective than Holyfield throughout the match. He consistently and diversely worked with his lead right hand, making his jab more effective than Holyfield's in almost all phases of the fight, in attack, in response, and in anticipation. Now that's the common attack, he can't set his feet. Because if you stand right in front of Moore, and now the chance, southpaw number one contender, really did become a factor, I don't think. You, know, you could be a righty as hell, but it wouldn't matter. It's just like hitting a heavy, but only because Mora targeted Holyfield's body, disrupted the rhythm of his lead hand, and, in close quarters, focused on body shots. Mora tries the right hook, but Holyfield is quick to return fire. Now a combination from Mora. Being amateurs, and uh, there was a... At the end of the second round, Holyfield managed to knock Mora down, but it didn't have a decisive impact on the course of the match. In the fifth round, Mora opened a cut above Holyfield's left eye. As a result of the bout, Michael Moore secured a majority decision victory, although many believe that Moore won the fight convincingly. Professional boxer cut, but Moore from that Michael start drilling and kind of bouncing, kind of trying to figure him out. He's doubling it up. He should start doubling it up to think over where they go. Bouncing around the ring, and I think Michael should be. Haven't seen that in a few rounds. See, that's the advantage that I expect to see. The advantage that digs down. It's almost like that little bit of flurry took something out of Evander. He started off strong, he was very active. Evander's doing this on purpose to, to suck him into something tonight. I think Holyfield coming forward now. Have that spark to him. Michael digs down, all of a sudden gets a burst of energy and starts to kind of pull away. It's a situation where, you know, Michael's going to He doesn't want to get sucked in to deep water. That's what they say. He doesn't realize that he's not punching the corner. Is off and so much, maybe a little bit of weakness in Holyfield, a little bit of, of lack of ability to come back quickly. Mild rally now. There he goes with the, just the jab. Moore tries to go. To He's done it a couple times with success. He should double that jab. Holyfield now. To come with that typical Evander and then do it again. That's how he overwhelms Neither fighter and then the other fighter responds. I think those mild pieces are terrible. A lot of people think we're, we're at the end though. We're halfway to the end. He dug to the body there. He dug good Holyfield type. 
But Michael stays off the road ring. His reflexes are best. Punches look good when he lands like that. Like when he throws that. Oh, there's that. Michael looks very good now. Very good. Best round Michael Moore has had since the fifth round when he backed up Holyfield and opened up. After the fight, Holyfield was hospitalized. He was diagnosed with dehydration, a shoulder joint injury, and a kidney contusion. His heart struggled to pump fluid, causing his lungs to be filled. According to some reports, doctors stated that he had a heart attack in the ring. Subsequently, serious issues with the left ventricle of the heart were diagnosed. Doctors advised him to end his career, which he did. What we see with his heart, though, is the elasticity is not quite normal. That it, it doesn't expand as easily as we would expect the heart to do. After a couple of months of intensive treatment, Evander Holyfield underwent a commission examination and his heart condition normalized. He also claimed to have sought the services of a healer named Benny Hinn, which he believed helped him. After retiring, he turned to spreading the word of God, leveraging his popularity. However, Holyfield couldn't stay away from boxing for long. After a tough defeat, Evander Holyfield returned to the ring after 13 months. He looked very fresh and secured a worthy victory by judges' decision over the former world champion Ray Mercer. By the summer of 1995, Mike Tyson had been released from prison and defeated Peter McNeely. For the first time in four years, he returned to the ring, and their long-anticipated bout with Holyfield became a subject of numerous discussions. As a result, Holyfield's next fight and Tyson's second fight after his return were scheduled for the same date in the same city November 4th in Las Vegas, but on different channels. Unfortunately or fortunately, Tyson couldn't compete on the planned day due to a broken finger. He stepped into the ring a month later. On November 4th, Evander faced Riddick Bow for the third time. Bow held the WBO title, which, however, was not at stake. Holyfield believed that fighting for the WBO title might hinder him from reclaiming the other three belts. As usual, he was the underdog. Holyfield started the fight well, circling his opponent and launching sporadic attacks. However, he then engaged in a brawl again with the younger Bo. For him, a jab, you don't wait to you. Real combination and Bo. Bo must remember the pretty side Riddick Bo's jab when Holyfield won the first round on all three A lot of people give Bo credit for being a very good right hand puncher if he can get it low as you to sleep in. After the second round, the fighters, following tradition, continued to fight after the bell. Starting from the third minute of the third round, the fight resembled a clash between two bulls. To keep a guy moving. Field so effective moving in and out. Standing of the there, you don't waste your energy if you don't have to. Second Why? round is now staying inside. Why move? This guy's not doing anything to make you move. Watch the other side. Give me clear It was an uppercut that rocked Holy Again, the other thing to protect himself. Like the cut. Another uppercut by Bo. That's not the way you re-establish yourself as a good oh, boxer. Unpenalized. Hard riding. Hard time. Choosing his spots judiciously and landing at a higher rate. Hard riding. Shots in the middle of the ring. Crowd rises. When your head is in there against the other guy, Holyfield came back with a counter left. I end the fifth round, noticing that Holyfield was responding less to his opponent's attacks. Commentator and former Holyfield opponent George Foreman asked the referee to stop the fight. George feared that Holyfield would be carried out in a pine box. But Evander Holyfield wasn't ready to go to the grave. 53. Hard right hand by Holyfield. Here he is. Yeah, but now Holyfield comes back. It's evident he cannot get his breathing together. He can't. <laughs> well, I can At the beginning of the sixth round, he landed a precise left hook, and Bo found himself on the canvas for the first time in his career. Down goes Bo! 
amazing turnabout attributed to the final blow. And there it is, that left hook in, in suggesting that something like this could happen again. So we are... He was shaken, but Holyfield's follow-up didn't bring success. of the first fight. Almost yeah. a mirror image of what we saw. Bo can't seem to stop the left hand. At that time, there was no doubt. Landed 30 of 41. Both men finding some of the snap in their punches in this last minute of round seven. Throughout the second of their three fights. He is showing. He's showing. In the eighth round, after taking a short right, Holyfield himself ended up knocked down. Tremendous stuff. He got up, but after receiving two more powerful right blows, he fell on the ropes. Referee Joe Cortez stopped the fight. Third knockdown this of Holyfield's it. career here comes the, the end. fourth, and that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. Yeah. What a fight. It was Holyfield's first premature defeat in his career. Highest expectations we had. Later, it became known that 10 days before the third fight with Riddick Bowe, Evander fell ill and hepatitis was discovered. I ate some seafood and got hepatitis A, and my doctor told me, you shouldn't fight. Your energy level gonna go up and down, up and down. Despite the weakness, Holyfield's energy would sometimes surge, and at other times, it would leave him. However, he made a clear decision to enter the fight, fully aware that it would be challenging to compete in such a condition. Everything was kept in strict secrecy, and Evander couldn't tell anyone about it, as he risked being disqualified. I was disappointed myself. I had the courage to get in that ring that way. But when it came to the final test, to just throw in a few punches and not worry about how I felt, I didn't do it. After the third fight, everyone thought it would signify the end of Holyfield's career as a great boxer. However, it turned out to be the opposite. Holyfield regrouped and went on to have even more outstanding fights. Over the next four years, Holyfield embarked on a series of triumphant victories, defeating Michael Moore in a rematch, twice overcoming Mike Tyson, and settling for a draw in a bout against Lennox Lewis. 17 punches and round one. Even a draw, the decision is even a draw. Both champions retain their belt. The judge's decision was met with boos. Many boxers and those closely associated with the sport expressed negative opinions about the decision, believing that Lennox Lewis more than deserved the victory. Where's the, where was that third round? That's what I want to know. What happened in that third round? Well, Lennox, you know what? Have you ever thought about we fight again? I got another chance to do it. When Holyfield was asked about the outcome, he responded, I'm not the judge. Let's have a rematch. The rematch, naturally, took place in November 1999. This time, Evander Holyfield was much better prepared, especially tactically. Surprisingly, the second match turned out to be more intense and far more competitive than the first. Contact, don't try it. Evander George is it right up in Lennox's chest to one side and he stays there. Projects more sheer energy than was the case in New York. Now for Evander, all he was fighting long reach. He did it 12 rounds and threaded that Deloy. Good left jab. That gives him confidence. Touched him up inside with a little right off the cut. Off the round one results. And you see only be listening to Don Turner's instruction. The beginning of the fight belonged to Lewis. He controlled the distance with his left hand and worked inside against Evander. So this round. He had to make contact with the left hand. Inside, watch Lewis come up with a nice uppercut to have twice the activity of the third yet. performances in the past. However, this time, the Briton felt his opponent's hits, and they rocked him, as seen in the third round. 
That's one thing. Don't let this loudest guy to get the distance. This has changed in the eight years since. Oh, so I wouldn't have to remember him. In the middle of the round, Holyfield Stand lands in. close. Lewis is bending down. And Holyfield. Because Lewis is backing up. But later on in the round, hey, he did out. land a cleaner punch. Oh, it's a man sport, George. Let him go. It was the first round that Holyfield made. A taller man leaned forward and be alone for the moment. Right hand over the top by Lewis. 15 or 17. And a slid past Evander's ear, though. And Holyfield grinning as Lewis lands a big one. And Alpern telling Holyfield to watch his head and busts Holyfield again. Lewis better get his hands up. Holyfield is doing Absolutely. It. He thinks he's got Holyfield going with his big right thing hand. about this, I didn't mention. Lewis has his big difference in the position of the protective cup. He gets himself in the range of getting hit himself. Well, despite the one, he's as good as anybody in the sport. Larry? Listen about it a little bit. And Lewis looking to the... In the sixth, Holyfield, realizing that he had nothing to lose in this measured fight, began to intensify. He took hits, but Lennox also responded with successful combinations. Right hand for the taker. He had no idea he would have to fight for this title. Knocked him out, and he forgot about it. And I'm telling you, the long right hands to hold the chest. Things he didn't do last time. And then came the seventh round, which stood out more than all the other 23 rounds combined. He didn't need to be in the fight. In the seventh round, Lennox started working harder. He pressed his fist on contact, and his straight right and two signature rights from below found their mark. The Brick controlled the fight impeccably, stifling any attempts by his opponent to enter the mid-range. Whenever Holyfield broke through, Lewis grabbed and held him in a clinch until the referee separated them. However, this played a cruel trick on him. While in the clinch, Evander landed a short but incredibly powerful left to the side of Lewis's head. The Briton's legs wobbled. Holyfield rushed to finish him off but kept getting tangled up in close quarters. Lewis regained his composure, but his reaction to the opponent's actions was not as sharp. He took another left from the American, and once again, his legs buckled. But here comes Lewis now. Lewis rallying again. Combination. Hard right hand by Holyfield. It was a serious shakeup. Towards the end of the round, the fighters exchanged blows at mid-range, which clearly favored Evander. Round seven, the best round these two fighters have fought against each other for shots. Right hand. Lewis obviously much more conscious of wanting to the by Holyfield again. Left hook upstairs now. Another left hook and Lewis backs up and goes. Totally leaning forward now. He is into trouble. But Lewis has that he's going to fight. With those jabs to the chest. Yes, he did. And it looks from time to time. And the bringing of that cuff. So it's a much more even fight. But despite yes, it, he just jump. On sheer determination, Holyfield won the following segment. However, from the ninth round onwards, Lewis once again held the advantage and steered the fight towards a logical decision by the judges. Lewis jabs is a different fight. Evander's mm -hmm. been in with a lot of giants, and he's never been. Well, Evander Holyfield won't back down from anybody. Big uppercut. Holyfield not throwing back. Fires the an Excellent box. Knows what to do and when to do it. Body Vanda, you know, he protects his fear, so that's why he's able to get right when he gets out here. He doesn't look weary, and that's where it counts. It will. I bet you anything. There's at least he should try to create as much of this as to the stuff. Nothing. Well, he's going to need Evander Holyfield. Did round ten. Ooh, good body there. That's when things turn around. Pitcher and he just stands there and he does whatever he wants. Here we go, telling Lennox Lewis the fight is close. Body shots hurt. 
Right hand behind the effort the two fighters are putting forth. But still, Lewis throws more. Lewis just doesn't seem to respect Lewis at all. He just can't sit there and box this guy. Lewis slightly staggered. Now he looks here in the 12th. Lennox seeming to try to load one big shot. Now he goes back to the top. Lewis has got a fight. Terrible here. If anything, Holyfield takes the ball. Right hand lands. This time, the score was in his favor, 117 to 111, 116 to 112, 115 to 113. Strangely enough, the second match turned out to be much more even than the first. Overall, it was far more eventful than the first encounter between these fighters. Lewis won and became the undisputed world heavyweight champion. On August 12, 2000, Holyfield secured a rather contentious victory over John Ruiz, becoming the first four-time world champion in the heavyweight division. Evander Holyfield stated in a post-match interview on Showtime that he fairly won, but immediately added that he would definitely give Ruiz a rematch. Up here they good. Give me a good the rematch of the boxers took place on March 3, 2001, in Las Vegas. Ruiz came out strong, landing two right hands that gave him a slight edge in the first round. Both fighters were cautious, though, reflecting their similar styles of waiting for an opponent to make a wrong move and counterpunching quickly. Ruiz followed instructions perfectly and was the aggressor in the second round, moving Holyfield around the ring at will. Ruiz had found a way to score, particularly with his jab. Still, Holyfield was effective enough to start a knot of swelling under Ruiz's right eye. Through three rounds, Ruiz's strategy of outmuscling Holyfield seemed to work. But late in the third round, Holyfield ended a flurry along the ropes by landing a combination that backed up Ruiz, who continued to search for a right-handed knockout punch. Despite Ruiz appearing to win the fourth round with a strong right hand and a crisp uppercut, Holyfield gained an advantage due to a cut that appeared above Ruiz's left eye, seemingly from a head butt. Ruiz also walked away from the fourth round with a bloody nose. Holyfield, meanwhile, absorbed several clean shots but never looked hurt. With blood oozing from his nose and a cut above his left eye, Ruiz had staggered Holyfield with two right hands midway through the sixth round. Ruiz 
on the inside, working the body in that uppercut. There's only 40 seconds left around. Holyfield survived, but trailed in the fight and needed to rally while avoiding Ruiz's devastating right hand. Holyfield responded, winning the seventh round with a solid left jab, right hook combination. Holyfield had finally sustained an attack in the ninth round with several left hooks and jabs that kept Ruiz off balance. It's a better of it on the inside. There's the nice right hand. And as they go on the inside, oh, he hits him that left hook, busts that other right. I'm lucky. Holyfield also began firing punches into Ruiz's body. In the 10th round, following several uneventful ones, Holyfield pressed Ruiz and scored a plethora of good hits. However, he halted his own momentum when he threw a low blow. The punch to the crotch caused Ruiz to double over, and he was given a few minutes to recover after a point was deducted from Holyfield. When the bout resumed, an apparently still angry Ruiz exchanged some blows with Holyfield before throwing his own low blows, causing him to be deducted a point as well. The 11th would prove the most eventful round as Ruiz knocked the disoriented Holyfield down with a straight right halfway into the round. Holyfield beat the count to get up, but was weak in the legs and mostly clung to Ruiz for the remainder of the round, losing his own footing and going back to the canvas twice both ruled slips rather than knockdowns. Ruiz continued to land power shots on the dazed Holyfield at will, additionally opening up a cut next to his left eye. The 12th round began with Ruiz dominating and connecting with nearly every jab he threw, Holyfield's defense clearly slipping. Holyfield went back on the offensive and both boxers landed power punches in between bouts of clenching and body punching, with Ruiz generally getting the better of the exchanges over the still shaky Holyfield. Before the decision was announced, Ruiz embraced Holyfield, returned to his corner, and retrieved a Puerto Rican flag, which he then waved in the center of the ring. Ruiz scored a unanimous decision to become the first Latino heavyweight champion. As a result, Holyfield won the first bout, Ruiz won the second match.
Well, in the third one, a draw was declared, even though Evander looked much better than his opponent. After three wars with the sloppy John Rees, Holyfield's age has become a big issue. After headbutting his way to victory over Hazem Rahman in June of 2002, it seemed like Evander still had enough left to go on as a fighter, although not enough to win at all. His next opponent became Chris Bird. Fans joining us around Bird was the number one contender that no one was eager to face. Holyfield, being true to his namesake of the warrior, chose to take on Bird, who Evander previously said he wasn't interested in fighting, citing his style as a matchup he'd rather pass on. Prepares to summon the fighters to the center of the ring. And if you haven't seen Bird before, instant lost stance. Holyfield has had three previous. In the first round, Holyfield looked like he might be able to knock Bird out with power shots as he steered him into the ropes, where Bird was less likely to escape. Exactly the opposite to right and slams. Bird's corner, consisting of his father and mother, instructed Chris to stay in the center of the ring where he could better negotiate Holyfield. Bird followed that advice going into the second round and popped his flyswatter jab successfully and left Holyfield looking old, unbalanced, and confused. And then they hit you with something. That's what you gotta do up the duck. The best one will tell you, I'll do it. And you Holyfield, you don't want him to get that kind of curse. Holyfield needs them close to the ropes to land two shots to bring. That was a move. Bird does not like close fighting. Yeah, but the thing is, Holyfield, this is not the kind of fight that Evander Holyfield has ever fought before. And with the bigger guys who's attacking him anyway. So, I mean, this is a very big round for Bird. Yes, in the second. The third round was more of the same, with Holyfield able to score with a head, but and not much else, while Bird stayed busier and scored often with love taps. Yeah, you just can't land the hard shots. Just say five. Let the ref say work. Shots set. You got to step back and breathe once you do that. It was interesting on the field's head. Box. Relax when he wants. You just can't do that. And there's the first headbutt of the There's the first clash of heads as Holyfield comes in aggressively. Bird always first, beats Holyfield to the punch every time. And he makes you look foolish once you decide I'm going to hit the center of the gut. And try to jab with him. Make it a ding. In the fourth, Holyfield scored with a few good power shots, but Bird took them better than expected. One other thing about the rules, you're not allowed to spin a guy. If you start the night, the watch. Vladimir Klitschko and Jameel McGrew. Now Evander's picked up his right hand lead. Interesting shift in momentum here. Holyfield getting Bird's attention. Hard left hand. Take the power off the shot. Stop trying to hit him with a big shot. And Holyfield gets in four shots to punctuate the round. Rounds five through ten were boring. With Chris Bird doing about as much damage as a shadow boxer might, all the while scoring points. Check him with that bag hand. What he used to do is a kind of slatches, but he's throwing sharp punches like that. He's landed. The body shots are landing. Now he gets a right hand in upstairs. Bird decides to throw back. Holy field landed in. Suck it up and get some energy here. How legal it is to punch with open-handed gloves, I don't know. Referee Randy Newman never warned Bird about it at all. At one point, even Evander was doing it. He was doing anything he could in his frustration, but to no avail. Holyfield lands a right 
Julio's corner told him to be first. Get back and be first. That's the lot of open the boxing glove, just like George told you. You got to You must keep the right. You know, I think it's abundantly clear by now that Randy Newman isn't going to Holyfield hold him. Holyfield made the mistake of trying to counterpunch a counterpuncher when he should have been just looking to touch Bird and, like Bird, score points and win rounds. Do whatever he wants. Keep it there all night and throw some other. Mayweather and Castillo. Of the two fights that King has paired together, this starts off sitting down on the stool and doesn't go down, just turns soft. Chris was too athletic for Evander, who was more accustomed to fighting bigger, slower men. Stop trying to win the guy. There's not quickness in there. You have that backhand with that zone throw power. Well, and if you go to the body instead of to the head, too, just does not believe in throwing a little shots, man. He lands a right. That ain't gonna do that. Feel just starts to get a little rhythm here. Just to those punches hurt, takes your power away from you. It's possible that Evander's 40-year-old reflexes simply couldn't keep up with the 30-year-old Bird. Look at Bird laughing and smiling at us as he pops Evander, starting to warm the Bird a little bit. In the 10th, Holyfield did all he could to corner Bird or get him against the ropes and wail on him the best he could. Shots would have been a different story. Solely because he thought the public wasn't interested in the fight, or do you still wish you saw Bob who can box Klitschko and he uh, returned to Vladimir Klitschko? And he paid 240 pounds plus himself. Right hand grazes Bird. In the 11th, Bird was playing Holyfield like a fiddle until late in the round when Evander caught Chris against the ropes and got some solid bodywork in and a few good shots upstairs too. He caught him on the ropes in Tacoma. You gotta step up and fight this man. Don't run him away anymore. Make him respect you. If he doesn't respect you, make him respect you. I mean, I want, you want to see her leave. You're gonna have to catch some shots, but there's a hard right hand by Holyfield. Never open a box of match. Never open. Once again, there he is, tired, desperate. He's punches as he was at the end of the last round. And he tries to turn around and retaliate. And Evander catches him. In the 12th round, Holyfield and Bird squared off many times. To my surprise, Bird hung in there and traded with Evander instead of boxing from the outside and protecting his huge lead. Holyfield did his best, but it was far from enough to conquer Bird. Bird won by unanimous decision. Everyone believed that after this Holyfield would definitely retire. After 10 months, the real deal is once again returning to the ring, where he is set to face the talented fighter from lower weight classes, James Tony, also known as Lights Out. The confrontation between Holyfield and Tony was a sad sight for people who care about Evander. This fight was a real test for Evander, and he failed. Against a strong guy like Holyfield, but will it... Holyfield started the fight well and looked good at the start. But it was difficult to hit Tony accurately and cleanly. Whether it's back, as he discovered already, the answer to the fighter. But the way you beat him is you do throw this one. You do what he's doing it here in this round. Not only is it good for Holyfield, that he saw in his last fight against Chris. Sport measuring a lot of moments in that last round, actually. And you're not supposed to be able to hook with the left hook on the left. Oh, oh, oh. And we enter round three, scheduled for 12, a heavy one hand. And so far, that the left hand seems okay. Finally, in the third round, Evander hit James with his best right hand. And nothing happened. Early in the round, James Holyfield was able to do something you seldom can do against Tony Land, a good right hand. But you see how well Tony slips these punches. And later on in the round, dare I say it, Holyfield told us, not saying it's dazzling at this point, but it's certainly better than... Then in the fourth round, Tony hit Holyfield hard in return and Evander staggered. 
After that, the fight became one-sided. By the seventh round, Tony was hitting Evander at will. Holyfield has been in this situation in the past. He was once a young fighter who fought aging lions like George Foreman and Larry Holmes. And, of course, there were times when Evander was beaten up and came back to take over. But not at this time. Not enough punches coming from Evander. He's undisputed champion once again. You have to wonder about, about that after this performance. That. An aficionado yeah. now that even he lost to that big right hand. By the eighth round, Holyfield's face was swollen and blood was flowing from his mouth. Determination. He reveres Marciano because he was a spawn. Since 1997, Tony he hasn't performed well, which usually is the power you do have. Blood from the... Uh, Again, nothing. Comes back with a couple of soft left hands. And again, struts back to his corner. Moment there in the corner. Don Turner urging. I remember the boxing corner of a long time. You continue to get hit by these guys. In the ninth round, a flurry of blows, culminating in a powerful blow to the body, forced him to stretch out on the canvas. Or at least a minute or two away from that. Yes. We may be seeing the end of an Most likely, referee Jay Nady would have let the fight go on. After all, Evander was the ultimate warrior boxer. But when Holyfield stood up, Don Turner entered the ring, forcing the referee to stop the fight. It was the second time in his career that he was knocked out. It was one of the best decisions of Turner's career. At the time the fight was stopped, Tony was leading on the cards of all three judges. It was a good moment for Holyfield to end his career as a fighter. You've won two of your last eight fights. You said before the fight that you would continue fighting. Your goal is to be the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, that you'd have to be beaten up. Were you beaten up sufficiently tonight to stop fighting? No. I, he, he won, and he, this is a fight that, you know, he got off before me and all that, and uh, his punches, he, you know, he hit with, it was just an overwhelming punch, he just got off before me. Despite the new ban on participating in professional boxing, Holyfield returned to the ring after 13 months, continuing to fight for his rights and striving to maintain the opportunity to participate in high-paying bouts. His next opponent was Larry Donald, nicknamed The Legend. Donald was an experienced fighter who, although never reaching the heights of stardom, had secured 40 victories, 24 by knockout, and 46 fights, with three losses. Interestingly, those losses came against some of the most prominent opponents. From the outset, Holyfield had nothing. His legs betrayed him in the first round when he hit the canvas on a slip. Yeah, it, it, Donald has had some moments. Back to Holyfield's face twice. Holyfield too often, he takes that first punch. Yeah, two minutes of the fight. And Donald catches Donald him. Donald standing his ground. Which he... And then was wobbled with a glancing right to the head in the second round. It never got any better. understand because it's your life and you're the one out there. Lead with your left, then follow with the right. Yep. 
that, but if you look at the heavyweight division, it's... And Donald doesn't look so sexy. Donald's way, and he remains confident in his boxing. Yeah, but he wants the counter punch, he indicated. 14 out of 53. Good hook by Good hook. if he's expecting to win this fight. And, and even if it's against... Uh, Vander here, particularly with the good start. 30 to 27. Larry. Told us that he feels like Evander hasn't done the right kind of the work in the gym. fights. Apparently, previous trainer Don Turner felt Hughes's point is if you're gonna fight, you can't baby yourself in and the maybe he should do other things for his conditioning because he never right. saw him. And right now all the field are starting Sister to look appears to be surging here. And not to say Muhammad Ali used to say the coffee is old. The only fight in when Rockman's head swelled up like a basketball. Because if he has the heart and the wheel, All right. I think the notion that he's going to knock out. Well, I mean, he got beat, but now he's significantly less movement and, and reflexes so far is that he's been able to try to knock him out or discourage him. was to box him and move around. See, like By the sixth round, Holyfield had virtually stopped throwing punches as Donald, 37, stalked forward, pounding Holyfield into the ropes, where he could nothing other than cover up. Larry Donald, confidence. Yeah, but Donald's waiting, and he's giving you back the punch. Larry Donald is letting his hands go. Going to quick hands, quick right hand leads, coming back with a left hook, and a, and a kick. I'm worried about it, frankly. Now that might be the smartest you know, idea. Holyfield's still not getting up. And now another right hand over the So Holyfield twice through the punch that Vaughn Bean used to bedevil him. Looking at an amount of time and to make him fight overwhelm his opponents to outwork he was actually resting you know yep. it, it's more difficult for other fighters and both of those are world class yes. world class yes. as the rounds wore it was obvious holyfield could only try to last the distance he hadn't had a knockout since his 1997 rematch with michael moore and even in the 12th round he was unable to muster one more burst of energy have gone out this exactly way right, right. but there's something else too Fight hasn't changed. James Tony was one thing. Falls out for bottom tonight. Left hook. He want to do it at that point. He was at the end of his career. He hurt Donald with the right hand at the end of the last round, and to bring back one more great moment. And Holyfield. I don't want to see him stop, but one good body shot would end the fight. Right hand to follow up as well. Into the 10th, the 11th is another. You probably can't knock Commander Holyfield out. See your in the end, the judges had it 119 to 109, 119 to 109, and 118 to 109. An old Rolls Royce. Chevy's in force. <laughs> Just three days after the fight, the commission unanimously decided, in consultation with the commission's chief medical officer, Ron Stevens, to impose an indefinite medical ban on Holyfield. At that time, Evander was 42 years old. Washington Post, August 17, 2005 Former heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield was barred from fighting in New York by the state's athletic commission because of poor performance and diminished skills in recent fights. Nevertheless, in 2006, our hero decided to make a comeback. He secured four consecutive victories, two of which were by knockout. In October 2007, Holyfield faced the undefeated Sultan Ibrahimov. Evander Holyfield, I hope you're training right now because Sultan Ibrahimov, the world heavyweight champion, is the real deal. Fast hands, solid footwork. This guy's got more bite than Tyson. I come in for you, Holyfield. You Getting the jab off first. He hooks off it very the fight began tentatively, with Ibrahimov mostly staying at range and avoiding exchanges, keeping Holyfield at bay with fast combinations. Figure out Ibrahimov. It certainly has respect. It has been. Another loose. Ibrahimov just waving the right hand, almost waiting for uh, his uh, right hand.
right hand landed by... By the third round, Ibrahimov began to take control of the fight. Combination puncher who will rip body shots. We'll see if who's the stronger guy in terms of punching. Whether the hand speed of Ibrahimov is an issue. So you dictate the pace as champion by Ibrahimov. He's ripping a jab and then unloading with the right hand. Sultan visibly hurt Holyfield with body punches in the third. Behind it, he'll try to slip or He's got to make him stop. It's the lefty. We always love the hook. Holyfield spars. Oh, good. Straight left. And oh. Jab at all. Left to the left and a right. The champion. Well, I think he's fighting we can his rounds away. Right. In the fifth round, Ibrahimov's in ring dominance became more visible after again hurting Holyfield with combinations to the head and body. Pretty much all comes from Ibrahimov. Nice Good right, right hand from the kind of distance he wants. Holyfield. You know, Holyfield was in the Bragamoff situation. Nice jab by Bragamoff back in the home. And alert. Oh, nice right Russian action. champion to step it up. It's Holyfield's a good counter, punch, counter puncher. Oh, oh, oh. The busier and more. Yeah, boy. The left hand. And another left. And by the seventh, the fight took on a one sided manner as Holyfield appeared to be unable to keep up with his younger opponent. Holyfield had some success in the eighth, hurting Ibrahimov with a counter body shot and a straight right hand. Oh, right hand by Holyfield. Look at it from another angle. The left, the right hand, very low by. We'll change up, and we go back to the familiar pattern. In his be something different, really. Look, he hits a banner, a banner to see. It's even some of the people that people don't think. It Ibrahimov hurt Holyfield again with a flurry of shots in the tenth, but didn't go for the finish. Sensational punch, I believe. Yeah, he's hurt. He's not covering up. And the Bragamoff, who would have thought it would have been a left hand to the punches you don't see are the ones that jab. And there's that big left. And I think they can drive Holyfield back. Commander Holyfield is going to need something dramatic. And he almost got it. The championship rounds saw Holyfield unsuccessfully going for the knockout as Ibrahimov was able to effectively neutralize Holyfield's offense and hurt Holyfield with precise body shots. Ultimately, the fight went full 12 rounds, with Sultan being declared the winner by unanimous decision, successfully defending his WBO World Heavyweight title. The judges scored about 117 to 111, twice, and 118 to 110. For such a long journey, having gone through so many wars, Holyfield picked up defeats, of which there were nine at the time of the battle with Val Luv. Evander aimed to conclude his career with a grand finale, leaving his name in the history of boxing and retiring as an immortal legend. This was the perfect moment to unleash all the remaining firepower. On that evening, he had a chance to surpass George Foreman's remarkable record, becoming the oldest champion at the age of 46. Val Luv attempted to move forward and press his opponent, but Evander demonstrated brilliant footwork. The American moved around the ring as if he were 26 years old, not 46. Constant maneuvering and elusive movements became a significant challenge for Nikolai. Soon, Holyfield started landing punches. In the second round, a combination of a left to the body and a right from the side stood out, with the final punch landing with exquisite precision. Holyfield's lateral movements became an unsolvable problem for Val Luv. The commentators of that bout could only state that Nikolai would lose his title in such a manner. 
що йому треба робити. In a very passive third round, Holyfield once again looked better. He didn't throw punches too often, but distributed his energy skillfully and didn't waste it unnecessarily. In this segment, he delivered another powerful right from the side to his opponent's jaw. Meanwhile, the Russian appeared somewhat clumsy compared to his technical opponent. In the next sequence, the American broke through to close range and once again pierced Nikolai's defense with a left hook. The crowd rejoiced and chanted Holyfield. Meanwhile, Valo threw jabs that mostly landed on his opponent's chest area and rarely reached Evander's head. The entire fight unfolded in a similar manner as Valov attempted to press and land his jabs. While Holyfield worked at a measured pace, not overly active, but incredibly precise. It was evident how superior he was to his opponent in terms of technique. The true old school boxing of the 90s simply outclassed Nikolai, who couldn't come up with any antidote. However, opinions were divided among the judges at the end of the bout. By the majority decision, they awarded the victory to Val Lov. The first score announced was a draw, which was met with booing and uproar from the audience. When Nikolai was declared the winner, the fans were outraged. At that moment, one could only wonder how satisfying it must have been for Nikolai to defend his title in such a manner, witnessing the blatant robbery of a 46-year-old veteran who managed to put up such a fight at his age. Undeterred, Evander went on to have three more bouts. Overall, there were no willing contenders to force Holyfield into retirement by force, and he had to end his career in this manner. Despite all the defeats, Evander the Real Deal Holyfield remains a true boxing legend. Cause I'm